You're tuned into the first newscast devoted to the Highland Lakes area. Local team coverage on Tribune Headline News. Bringing you the stories you care about now. Hi everyone, I'm Connie Swinney with your headlines in today's newscast. It's bad and getting worse. The Lower Colorado River Authority releases the latest information and predictions on the drought. And in our guest weather segment, we welcome Shannon Heap, who will not only bring you the forecast, but a few highlights and winners of the Marble Falls Adult Soapbox Classic. We also have a local sports segment coming up. The update on the drought later on. But first, authorities nabbed five drug suspects, and you won't believe this. Two of them in the Burnett County Sheriff's Office accused of taking drugs and then paying a visit to an investigator inside. According to police, two women from Burnett arrived at the Burnett County Sheriff's Office to be interviewed about a case. Officers suspected they were on drugs. Out in the parking lot of the annex next door to the Sheriff's Office, a drug-detecting dog gave an alert on the vehicle the pair arrived in. 30-year-old Heather Hart and 41-year-old Laura Fenderson were arrested and charged with possession of a controlled substance, methamphetamine. In a separate narcotics case, on the same day, the Sheriff's Special Operations Unit pursued a tip about a drug deal in Marble Falls. After observing the alleged deal, authorities arrested 28-year-old Lakeisha Pegg, 19-year-old John Castillo, and 26-year-old William Flutie. They were charged with felony delivery of a controlled substance, once again methamphetamines. The three suspects face up to 20 years in prison if convicted. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, the only thing hotter this past weekend than the weather forecast were the race cars at the Marble Falls Adult Soapbox Derby. I have highlights coming up. Welcome back. Time now for our guest weather segment, our host, Shannon Heap. Thank you, Connie. Hey everyone, I'm Shannon Heap, Executive Director of the National Adult Soapbox Derby Association. It was an amazing race this weekend at the second annual Marble Falls Soapbox Classic. We had a number of new features, including racing under the lights after hours. As you can see here, there were some pretty creative nighttime entries. We found out that the fun heats up down the 3rd Street Hill as temperatures cool off into the evening. And in a moment, I'll have Derby race results for you too. But first, let's take a look at our three-day forecast for the Highland Lakes area. For your Wednesday, we have a 40% chance of showers and thunderstorms on the radar through the day. Otherwise, mostly cloudy with a high near 95. With the heat index, it will feel like 98. By Wednesday night, our rain chances are cut in half, with a low around 74 degrees. It may get a little gusty with winds up to 20 miles per hour. On Thursday, mostly sunny skies, the mercury will rise to triple digit temperatures with winds calming down a bit. We'll see more of the same forecast moving into your weekend. Now let's talk about another weekend. From June 17th through the 19th, hundreds of people made their way through downtown Marble Falls, all for a glimpse at a few funny cars speeding down a very big hill. Visitors and locals alike enjoyed hours of derby cars streaking down the 3rd Street Hill just off Main Street. We did everything to give the event the feel of real racing, complete with checkered flags at the finish line. The event thrilled not only the competitors who got close to speeds of 30 miles an hour, but the crowds which took in all the action Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. In some cases, the racers really flipped for the competition. Here's a look at a few of our top race results. In the Division I speed category, Monica Klein of Laga Vista took first place with her car called Kleinstein. Second place went to David St. Clair of Spring Branch in Don't Mess With Texas. And third place was captured by a local favorite, John Weems of Marble Falls in his team's car called Our Gang. In the Division II Jamaican category, First place went to Russell and Jeb Buster of Marble Falls in Jamaican Me Crazy. The Wagoneer Tire Special with Kelvin Edwards and Stephen Chessmore won second place. And third place went to Scott Cherry and Roger Rudick of Marble Falls with Cherry Bomb. We also have more awards, including a few special ones. You can check those out at adultsoapboxderby.com. 
That was your Derby news and the weather update. Thanks so much for watching. For the Picayune TV, I'm Shannon Heap, sending it back to you, Connie. Thanks, Shannon. The Picayune is proud to be a sponsor of such a great event which brings together the community. Coming up later in the Picayune Roundup, we have the best images of the Derby Parade and more of the special awards. Faith Academy broke out the donuts and lots of sodas. We're going to tell you why, coming up in sports. We are established. We are qualified. We are certified. We are knowledgeable. We are dependable. We are Ken's Heating and Air. Our people make the difference. Faith Academy standout track and field star Jordan Gray made it official by signing with Angelo State University in a signing ceremony hosted by Faith Academy recently. We did get a chance to talk to Jordan about the event. Here's what she had to say. It just feels amazing. I didn't even think this many people would come, so it's a great surprise and I love it. It's just. I really, I feel so blessed now. I'm going through the hard work and now it's like I'm reaping the rewards and God's blessed me, so it's awesome. We're going to switch sports now and return back to the Diamond where the varsity summer baseball team from Marble Falls has been playing teams throughout the area, including land passes where the Mustangs traveled recently. They ended up sweeping the Badgers 4-0 and 12-2. The best part about all of this the fact that the Mustangs are looking at extending their pitching staff. Cole Ridgely has been on the mound, as has Hunter Dooley, and we did get a chance to ask baseball coach David Norwood of the high school program what that means. And he said, well, you can never have too many arms on the pitching staff. That's it for sports. I'm Jennifer Fierro. Connie, back to you. Jennifer, thanks. As a serious drought grips the area, water officials express concerns about two of the largest waterways in our area dropping by about a foot each week. Lack of rain and hotter than normal conditions are to blame. According to the LCRA, nearly all of Texas is suffering from drought. October 2010 to May 2011 has been the driest on record in an eight-month period since the turn of the century. It doesn't help that temperatures have hit triple digits earlier than usual this year. Here are some aerial images of Lake Travis, which show the severity of lower water levels. Issues include exposed land and more potential water hazards. LCRA officials are gearing up for possible conservation efforts and so-called trigger points if the waterway levels continue to plummet. Actions may include restricting use in certain areas and limiting use among some water customers for example, Matagorda County rice farmers on the coast. The goal along the Highland Lakes is to reduce use by about 5%. The cities of Marble Falls, Burnett, and Meadow Lakes have already enacted Stage 1 voluntary water conservation measures, which include limiting outdoor water use to certain days. The city of Llano has also asked water customers to conserve. There, the Llano River continues to drop as well. Those were your headlines for the Picayune TV. I'm Connie Swinney. Hey everybody, Daniel Clifton here with your Picayune Roundup. Thanks for joining me. In this week's episode, everyone loves a parade. And we have those images from the Adult Soapbox Classic in Marble Falls coming up. But first, the Harmony School of Creative Arts is offering up a variety of music through Saturday. The organization's annual festival is in its fourth year. The event features everything from Texas folk and gospel to classical and jazz music. Concerts are every evening at the Uptown Theater in downtown Marble Falls. Admission is free, but a $5 donation is appreciated. The group will be hosting piano clinics at Harmony School for students again during the day. The concept of chamber music involves small groups, including string quartet musicians, giving the audience an intimate feel of entertainment. Now here's a rundown of the performers through Saturday at the Uptown Theater on Main Street. All performances are at 7 p.m., with the exception of Saturday, which is at 2 p.m. On Wednesday, W.C. Jameson, Buddy Case, and Keenan Fletcher are performers coming to the stage. 
On Thursday, Mike Saylor's Quartet, a jazz quartet from the UT Austin, will perform. The Blue Rose Trio rounds out Friday night, and Harmony students will perform their pieces perfected through the week on Saturday. Be sure and go to HarmonyArts.org for more information. There's only one thing in Marble Falls everybody's talking about more than the heat. How about a few funny little cars which heated up the Marble Falls streets over the weekend? We captured these images of a parade of derby cars during the Marble Falls Soapbox Derby Classic. A Friday night show and shine event featured dozens of competitors from across the state. Some of them even coming as far away as Louisiana. But most of the participants were homegrown with many of them from the Marble Falls area. The event was considered bigger and better than last year. Some of the special award winners were the Cowboy Coffin by Aaron Heap and Matt Blair of Kingsland for craftsmanship. The Clunker Award went to the Salsa Express with the team of Eddie Marsh and Donnie O'Neill. And believe it or not, this contraption was actually made out of a refrigerator and a stove box. The Community Support Award went to the team of John Weems, Rob Ellis, Greg Mills, Keith Russell, and Tom Fairley for their Our Gang entry. Well, that was your roundup. You can find more of these images and photos on the Marble Falls Derby races on our Facebook page. Go to the TV.com and click on the Facebook icon. Until next time, I'm Daniel Clifton. Mm -hmm.